Hello, this is Bill Steer from Carcass, and you're watching Chaos TV. Hello, Bill, and welcome to Chaos TV. How's the current European tour with Amon Amarth and Hell been so far? Um, it's been good. Yeah, this is the last night, actually, so we've been out for, I'm not sure, five weeks or, or thereabouts. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, AA are lovely people. Their crew have been very nice to us. Um, we've had a few ups and downs with the audiences because, you know, it's a very partisan crowd. Um, so Germany was a little bit tough um, in particular. But um, generally it's been fun. Um, been a lot of weird stuff going on with our bus. We keep having breakdowns and tires blowing out and stuff. But, you know, we got here, so. And you're not burned out? <laughs> I am completely, yeah. <laughs> but I think the others are too. I don't, I don't know if they're as bad as I am. <laughs> yeah. Last time when you were in Finland, you played a Tuska opener in Helsinki in 2008. Uh, yeah. Do you have any good memories from the show back then that you would like to share with us? From Tuska? Yeah. Um, just I remember it being a really lovely vibe. I mean, that, that's a great festival anyway because it's right in the middle of the city. So, you know, everything's nearby. I mean, you can walk back to your hotel if you want to sleep or whatever it is. Um, so I like that side of it. I just remember it being a really nice day and the crowd was killer. And then I got awfully drunk afterwards, um, you know, which was a bad idea because we had to fly to Italy <laughs> the next day. But uh, anyway, yeah. Still a good memory, though. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Your latest album, Surgical Steel, has received really great feedback everywhere and male fans really seem to like the album. Uh, have you guys been pleased with the efforts so far? Yeah, I mean, we didn't have particularly high expectations when we released the thing, you know. It, we were doing it more for ourselves and, you know, a small hardcore fan base. We didn't really think about the outside world. Um, so, yeah, it's outstripped anything we would have dreamed of, to be honest. Um, we're really happy with the responses we've had, and I believe the label's happy because they've recovered costs already, so, yeah. How was it for Carcass to start writing material for this album? Because you have a quite an impressive back catalogue, and some albums that even has been considered as classics in their own genre. Um, we really went about recording this record in the same way we did the previous ones. It was a case of getting to the rehearsal room with a bunch of riffs, and hammer out a, an arrangement of a song um, for as long as it takes, really. Because sometimes you get something really sorted out in, in an afternoon. Other times it's taking days to, to really get an arrangement the way we want it. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was just three people, Dan, Jeff and myself, um, locked away, no outside involvement, no in label interference or anything like that. Um, so I guess that's the reason it sounds the way it does. And um, as I've mentioned before, we didn't really have any of the influences coming in. Like the, the music that inspires Carcass is the same stuff now as it was then, if you know what I mean. So there's not really one of those scenarios where you have an older band desperately trying to keep up with the kids. Um, I mean, A, we're not really interested in that. And B, I mean, we look pretty foolish if we did. So um, yeah, for better or worse, that's why the record's this, this way, I guess. Yeah. Cool. What are your own personal favorite songs from the new album, Playing Wisely, and why? Um, it changes from day to day. I mean, at the moment, Mount of Execution is probably my favorite. And there's a few reasons for that. I guess it's, it's the longest song we've ever done. Um, so it was kind of, it was a challenge just to get the arrangement right. And we knew it was a long tune, but we didn't realize it was going to be eight minutes or whatever it turned out to be. Um, and I also like it because um, there's elements on there that haven't been on previous Carcass records. Like, there's a fairly lengthy acoustic passage at the beginning. We've never really done that before. Um, there's some melodic bits for later on in the song. Um, yeah, it's just a good performance from, from everybody, I think. Well, I hope. <laughs> During your, your career, you have already achieved as a, lo a lot as a musician, but do you still have some personal goals that you would like to sh uh, achieve in the future? Wow, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I don't know, I'm not really a goal person, you know, I don't tend to look at things that way. Um, you live in the moment? Yeah, yeah, I don't tend to plan ahead too much. I just don't have that kind of brain, you know, so I'm, I'm never looking further than the next few months, you know. Um, so, 
I've been lucky, you know, I've got to do loads of things that I would not have expected, um, you know, as a kid. I mean, I used to go to gigs and watch bands and, you know, I wanted to do what those people were doing and I've been able to do it. You know, I've traveled all over the place and um, done some records. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy already, you know, in that sense. Of course, you, there's always something more you want to do. You'd like to do a better album, better song, play better guitar. But, you know, I don't really have any concrete objectives I'd say. <laughs> Having songs in video games is pretty good promotion for bands nowadays. Mm -hmm. If you could decide one song from the latest Surgical Steel album uh, to be featured in some video game, uh, what would it be and why? Wow. Um, Another good question. <laughs> yeah, it would probably be either Cadaver Pouch, Conveyor System or Captive Bolt Pistol. And I guess just because they're two songs that have quite a lot of extremes, you know, some really fast stuff on there, but dynamics. Um, so yeah, I guess that they're, they're the first two tunes that would occur to me. Although I don't know anything about video games, I've never played one, <laughs> to be honest. A lot of bands have licensed their own products, like for example, In Flames had their own whiskey and Motorhead had their own wine. If you could license something under the name Carcass, uh, what would it, would it be and why again? Mm. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's quite cool to do that stuff, I think. If, if it's a nice product, you know, which I'm, I'm sure those those things are. Um, I don't know, but we've never discussed it. They're rich, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess with, with this kind of music, alcoholic drinks are obvious connections, you know. There's no hypocrisy involved because most of the artists use them themselves. Um, but yeah, I mean, we haven't really tended to look at things in that way. You know, we have merchandise, but we haven't branched out the way some bands have. Um, but uh, that could change. Yeah. The year 2013 is now almost over, and most of the medias have started putting out their list of top albums for 2013. Are there many any albums from 2013 that you have been blasting from your stereos many times? Could you reveal the, your favorite ones? <laughs> oh God! Um, if I'm being really honest. Um, I don't think there's a single album from 2013 I've actually listened to properly. Um, I mean, God, that's really tricky. In terms of the, the bands that are out there currently, um, you know, actively making records and, and gigging, um, the, the two groups I would think of um, are both really old school. Um, and that would be Hell, who, who are playing tonight, and Grand Magus. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's more my kind of comfort zone, that style of metal. Um, with the, the contemporary stuff, I, I just don't really keep up, to be honest. Anything you want to say to the Finnish fans? Um, thanks for being there. Yes, thank you. <laughs>